Hello, Carpentry community. Here is a brief overview of stationary equipment and that carpenter apprentices should have a pretty good general knowledge. Let's start with the thickness planer. So what does a thickness planer do? What is its primary role? Well, it's pretty simple. It planes boards to a, a very uniform or similar thickness. Another thing you need to be aware of is how do you identify the size of a thickness planer? Well, quite simply, it's how wide the table is and how wide a board can be sent through. That identifies the size of a thickness planer. There's many different parts. One important part, if we look in to the infeed roller, it's a serrated uh, roller, and that's your infeed power. That brings your uh, wood into the planer. Here we have a drill press. Obviously some basic parts. We see the handle, the chuck that holds the drill bit, holds the drill bit. And you can see when we lift the open the top lid that a variety of belts and pulleys uh, adjust the speed of the drill. However, it's good to know that inside the casing here is a rack and pinion gear that actually ends up driving our drill. Again, how do we control the rate of feed or the rate uh, of, of speed of, um, of the drill being uh, put into the material? It's at the operator's handle that allows us to control the feed speed. Here we have a stationary jointer. A big question people ask is, well, how do you determine the size of a jointer? Well, quite simply, it is the width of the blade. In this case here, this is an 8-inch jointer. What does a jointer do? Well, you have an in-feed table, you have an out-feed table, and as the wood passes along and over the blade, it simply flattens the surface and makes it true. Here's a disc sander. You can see the disc needs to be cleaned. Important things with a disc sander, as you can see, you only use part of the disc when you are using the disc sander. You don't use the whole disc. In this case here, it's indicated with a, uh, a red do not use, so you want to use only half the disc. Uh, a big thing with the disc sander, what does it really do? You got to remember that you're rounding corners with it, but you're rounding square corners. That is something you need to keep in mind. Stationary bandsaw. Well, cutting curves is a big uh, useful thing in the shop and it's important to note that a narrower blade cuts our tight curves. This is a blade that's approximately a quarter inch with about 6 uh, TPI. But if you were needing to resaw, so if you had to resaw a 2x6 or uh, a post, a 4x4 four four post, you'd need to use a much wider blade. In this case here, this is a three-quarter inch blade. It's rolled up right now. This is a three-quarter inch blade, about four TPI. So you need a much wider blade if you're resawing. This bandsaw is a 14-inch bandsaw. How do you determine that size? Well, it's simply the distance between the blade and the arm. In this case here, 14-inch space. Here's an oscillating spindle sander. It has several different... Uh, sanding our uh, arms and can be interchanged. What does this thing do? Well its primary uh, job is to sand inside curves. So not necessarily outside curves but inside curves. So you could place a, uh, a wood project over top and sand an inside curve. Here's a drum sander also known as a thickness sander. So what is its main purpose? What does it do? Well, when it comes to very uh, particularly uh, uh, panels, uh, intricate panels, uh, you're sanding these to a flat uh, and true thickness. So sanding flat panels to thickness is the main purpose of this thickness, thickness sander or drum sander.